Hi there and welcome to today's video in which we are going to be looking at input devices. So we have covered a lot thus far um, in our computer literacy course. I hope you are still with me. So today we're going to look at devices that give instructions to the computer. That's why they are called input devices. Devices that give instructions to the computer. Okay, folks, so let's get into today's session where we're talking about input devices. So remember what I said to you initially when we started the video, we're talking about all the devices that give instructions to the computer. So there's a difference between the input devices that we're going to be talking about today and the following video, which will deal with output devices. So input can be data and instruction. So when we talk about data, when you hear people refer to data, they're actually talking about raw facts so things like your cell phone number your name um, on its own it doesn't really mean anything it's just a raw fact this is a cell phone number this is a name but when we put the name the surname the cell phone number and the address together it becomes meaningful and the minute raw facts or data turns into something meaningful it now becomes information right so these instructions can be um, through programs, where a program is giving an instruction. Okay, they mentioned here the set of instructions loaded into the memory. That was our RAM when you run the program. Instructions can be commands given by the user when you click on something. And instructions can be the user responding to a question. So, um, for example, when you're busy in... Um, you know, some sort of application and you want to close it and they ask you, are you sure you want to close it? By you clicking yes, you are giving an instruction, but at the same time, it is a response to a question that's been asked. Okay, so those are the different um, variations of instructions. Now, when we look at the motherboard, this is the picture of the back of a PC, so the side of a motherboard. These are all different connecting devices. These are what we call ports. So these ports are sockets that are used to connect anything external or what we call peripherals to the computer. Now remember, a peripheral is something outside of the system unit or that tower or that box. Okay. So the keyboard, the mouse, the monitor, um, you know, speakers, anything like that, those all connect to these ports. So because they are outside of that system box, they are peripherals so here we have a few ports this is the port to connect a screen to this is our vga port we've got a network port over here when we want to connect a computer to a network these are usb ports this is where we plug in our usb keyboard mouse our usb flash drives in fact even our usb chargers on our phone we plug in over here and this is where we plug in our speakers um, and this is for an old style keyboard and mouse as well then we have something called plug and play and i'm not sure if this has come up already but you'll hear the term when it comes to uh, desktops laptops um, and computers in general so your operating system by now you'll know what that is with windows uh, ios whatever it is it automatically picks up and configures the device plugged into the computer so that it can be used for example when i plug a flash drive into this usb port Windows will pick it up and it will allow me to work with it almost instantaneously. How is that done? Through plug and play. Okay, so that's a feature of your operating system. So let's look at some of the input devices. The first one is the keyboard and the keyboard is the most commonly used input device. There's a couple of shortcuts. We can see someone typing on what looks like a very old keyboard. Um, most of us know that keyboard layout now, you know, from our smartphones and things like that but um, there is our keyboard we've also got the mouse right the mouse has different options but again keyboard and mouse it we use it to give instructions to the computer and there you can see all the different mouse actions like clicking double clicking right clicking remember i went through this in the first video um, dragging and scrolling as well so again another device to help us give instructions to the pc then we also have pointing devices. Now our mouse can also function as a pointing device. And when we look at a laptop, you'll see that the mouse is slightly different. Here you can see we have our touchpad. 
This is where we're going to move our finger. Okay, if we want to move the mouse around, or we can use this pointing stick, which is an alternative to the mouse. Okay, so not all laptops have that. Um, most of them just have this touchpad area, um, but I think on IBM ones, uh, they have those. Okay, and then we have our buttons for our uh, left click and our right click. Okay, then we also have wireless versions of the mouse and keyboard. And they use short radio waves to communicate with the computer. So what actually happens is, and I'm just going to go back to this, um, on these ports over here with a wireless keyboard. First of all, your normal keyboard plugs into a USB port. So with a wireless, you get a small device that looks like that, that then plugs into your USB and it communicates wirelessly with your keyboard. So now I can go and get my keyboard, plug it in, and I'm able to work with it. Okay. It means there's less clutter because now I don't have cables. I can move my keyboard around a bit, okay? But it requires batteries. It can be slightly more expensive. Um, obviously, it can be stolen very easily. And sometimes there can be interference. So there are advantages and disadvantages uh, to either one. It depends on what you want. Most of the people have problems when it comes to just, you know, having batteries. You might be using it and then you leave it on and the battery runs, you know, down and things like that. Okay, then we have gaming devices. You've got things like joysticks, like the old, these are like the old joysticks. You've got your game controllers, right? You've seen the kids playing games. Those are also input devices. Why? Because when I click on this trigger, when I move this, when I click on these buttons, what does it do? It sends an instruction to the computer or to the console as to what to do. Even a steering wheel, when you're playing games, you are giving instructions to that device. Okay? Then we've got digital cameras. So with digital cameras, we know we can take pictures that can be downloaded, edited, you know, printed, emailed, anything like that. Most smartphones now include a good quality digital camera as well. And this allows us to instantly share, edit, and even to back up these photos. Just understand this. When it comes to your digital cameras, the resolution, in other words, the quality of the image um, that will determine the quality. The higher the resolution, the higher the quality, and then by default, the higher the size of that image is going to be. So it's nice that your smartphone can take beautiful pictures, but just know that the size of these pics are going to be big and it's going to take up a lot of space on your smartphone. This is why I've put that bias guide to um, smartphones and laptops so that you know which questions to ask if you are going to buy those devices. There are also things like scanners. So you have what's known as your flatbed and sheet fed scanners. And what do they do? Well, they scan an image into a computer. So over here on this glass area, you would put a page. Maybe this is a document or something like that. And it scans it into the computer as a digital version. So um, now what I can do is take a large document and I can put it through this device and it turns that physical paper um, document into a digital document that I can email, you know, or just store it somewhere. There are also these things called QR codes. Now, these QR codes can be programmed with anything. You can put, you know, people's information in here, an address, you know, anything like that. And when the person scans it with their phone, um, it will then bring up that particular information. So these are just ways of scanning into our PC. Okay, this is also our input devices. Right, then we have barcode readers. Many of you will know this from the shops, you know, um, especially when you paint, they scan the item, it reads the barcode, the price then comes up. And obviously this is a major benefit for speed and the accuracy of doing things. Um, barcodes that are scanned give access to information about the price, the code on the central database, and even updates the records for stock taking and sales figures for that shop. So there's a reason why they have gone this route to do these things. Okay. Now our scanners, like I mentioned to you, I'm just going to go through one or two of them of the advantages. You can scan a large document and convert it into a single digital file. You can scan an email directly and you can turn old documents um, into digital ones and store them for future generations. There are also biometric scanners. Now, I'm sure you've seen this on the movies where the guys, you know, scan their eye to get into a particular place or they put their hand on a, um, 
scanning device then it scans their hand and their fingerprints and things like that we have these on some laptops as well um, and the whole idea is that it measures something biologically so whether it's your fingerprint whether it's your eye i know on some smartphones they have this as well so if you just look at the phone a certain way the phone actually opens up or unlocks then most of us know this device yes the device that takes all our money yes <laughs> we have our bank cards and what do we do we simply tap and because all our data, our information there about us is stored magnetically, we simply tap, it reads what's on that little chip, and um, then it lets everything go through. And yeah, hopefully if we've got money, <laughs> it works, okay? There's also image capturing from our devices. So we know that today images and photos, photos are captured digitally via our cell phones, our consumer tablets, which are just the normal tablets, our laptops, point and shoot cameras and then our high-end cameras as well so all they're saying is that all of these things we can use them to take an image and then we bring that image into our pc so they're going to a little bit more detail on the digital cameras we know we now have cameras in our cell phones we then have the normal digital cameras like the pink one that you see over there and then we have very high-end cameras as well so i'm touching on this because i want us to remember how we got to this point many of you going through this course might remember how it was before the digital camera. We had to have a special camera that would take a roll of film. And that roll of film could only hold between 12 and 36 images. It was sensitive to light, so it had its own container. And you would only take it out and put it in the camera when you were ready to take a photo. Then you would take your photos. Hopefully you took proper photos because you didn't get to see it before it's actually developed. You had to take it to a particular shop, have it developed pay for everything whether the photos came out correctly or not didn't matter you had to pay for everything and then if you wanted to edit these images you would need to be able to scan it into the pc first before doing that think of how things are now with our digital camera we can in fact just with your smartphone you can take hundreds of pics you don't um, need to go and develop it anywhere you can edit it immediately you can see it immediately you can take the photos you know from scratch if you need to it's cheap for us to do this. We can send it anywhere, use it anywhere. It's just so much better um, than where we were before. So here are some of the things to bear in mind when you are going to buy a digital camera or you're looking at a camera on your phone. Just bear in mind the sensor size, which is how much light can come through the lens. The more light, the better. Optical versus digital zoom. Your optical zoom is where you can zoom into an image without it distorting or going blocky. Right? You know, you have that like pixelation. Um, the digital zoom will zoom in, but you will have that sort of blocky look. Your resolution is the quality of the image and your ISO rating is the camera sensitivity to light. The more sensitive it is, the better that image is going to end up being. Okay. Now they do mention a few advantages of that biometric input that I mentioned earlier. And the main advantage is security. Okay. But obviously um, it is very expensive to implement something like that okay as they indicating to us there then even atms are input devices how well there's a card reader slot what are you doing you're putting your card in you're punching in your menu choice you're punching in your particular code um, it then connects to the bank's network and does what it needs to via that touch screen okay so you're constantly giving it input 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 and then output is when you get your money and you slip out of that device Okay, so we know our touch screens are also input devices. Why? Because we touch on them to give instructions. Even when you go to the bank and you sign on like a pen tablet or things like that, that is you giving instructions to that device. When we work on our touch screens and on our smartphones, we are doing all of these things. We are touching it, giving it input. Okay, I'm just going through all of these things so you can understand what input is. Um, the main one of our input sensors on our phone that we take for granted is this one here, our accelerometer, because that sensor is what um, allows us when we change our phone or when we turn our phone over to the side, it, the, the whole image flips over as well. So there are sensors in these devices that actually do this for us. So we have advantages with touchscreens. We know it is more intimate to work with. The screen allows us more space. It's very intuitive. We've seen two or three year olds using smartphones and tablets okay um, but 
obviously one of the big disadvantages is the fact that you need to keep the screen clean it can break it can get damaged um, and that can ultimately be a problem but folks that's it for our input devices i hope you now have a clear picture as to what an input device is so that when you go to the shops when you're looking to get something or buy something you know this is giving instructions to the pc therefore it is an input device